Erica here from MacSales.com. Today we're going to show you how to replace the hard drive cable in the mid-2010 through late 2011 15-inch MacBook Pro. When you're upgrading your hard drive, in some cases the connecting cable may have become damaged or brittle over time and would need to be replaced. This cable is important because it connects your hard drive to the logic board. Replacing the cable is an easy process, but before getting started, here's some tips to make it even easier. First off, we recommend you watch the video all the way through so you have a clear idea of the process. Next, but just as important, we recommend you make a backup of your data. For details on that, you can visit MacSales.com. This job requires a few tools, a small Phillips screwdriver and a nylon pry tool. If you've got the mid-2010 model, you'll also need a tri-lobe screwdriver to disconnect the battery. Make sure you have these ready beforehand, along with the cable and some place to organize the screws like an ice cube tray. To help protect your computer, make sure you're working on a soft static resurface. And if you can, it's a great idea to watch the video on another device so you can follow along with the video step by step. Once you're all set, we're ready to follow along with our MacSales.com experts. After shutting down, unplugging, and closing your MacBook Pro, we'll need to remove the 10 Phillips screws holding on the bottom cover. Start with the three screws in the upper right, which are longer than the others. Then, remove the remaining seven screws. You can now remove the bottom cover and set it aside. The next step is to detach the battery. If you have a mid-2010 model, you'll need to first lift up the battery in order to have room to detach the battery connector. To do this, you'll need to remove the three tri-lobe screws holding the battery in place. The leftmost screw is located underneath a plastic tab, which you'll need to peel back. Once these screws are removed, lift up on the battery tab to raise it up and out of its bay. This will give you enough room to slide the battery connector out of its socket. You can then set the battery aside. For both 2011 models, the process is much easier. Simply lift up on the battery connector until it comes free of the socket. Now that the battery is disconnected, we'll need to remove the hard drive. Loosen the two Phillips screws holding the retaining bar in place. Then remove the bar entirely. You can then lift the drive up and out. Detach the SATA connector and set the drive aside. The hard drive connector cable runs across the top of the speaker assembly and along the bottom of the drive bay, and also includes a component that attaches to the front end of the MacBook Pro. First, let's remove all the screws holding the cable in. Start with the two holding the front assembly in, Then remove the two small screws holding the cable itself near the top of the bay. Now we can detach the ribbon connector by gently lifting it up and off the logic board. You can then peel the drive cable up from the MacBook Pro. It's mostly held in by adhesive. Once you've done that, the front assembly should just slide free. We need to remove the circuit board from the drive mounting bracket. First though, we need to detach the ribbon cable that connects the board to the indicator light. To do this, lift up on the ZIF connector's latch to open the connector. Then, simply slide the cable out of its socket.
Using your nylon tool, gently push against the back of the board until the adhesive comes loose. You can now set the cable aside. Take your new cable and peel the backing away from the adhesive on the circuit board. Then, line the board up in the same position as the old one and press it into place. Make sure the latch on the board's zip connector is in the open position and slide the ribbon cable into the socket. You can then close the latch to lock it in place. We'll need to bend the cable so that it'll lay properly in the drive bay. Set the cable on your work surface with the bottom side facing you. You'll see two dotted lines. Bend along the line closest to the holes for the screws so that it angles up. Then, for the second line, bend in the other direction so that it makes a nice S. The cable is now ready to install. Peel the paper backing off the bottom of the narrow cable to expose the adhesive. Being careful not to prematurely stick the cable to the bottom of the drive bay, slide the front assembly into place and secure it with the two Phillips screws. Next, line the holes in the cable up with the holes in the MacBook Pro's chassis and use the two tiniest Phillips screws to hold it in place. Next, make sure the cables sit flush against the wall of the drive bay and press down on the narrow cable so that the adhesive holds it in place. Finally, make sure the cable sits nicely in its channel and reconnect it to the logic board by lining the two connectors up and pushing them together. You can now attach your hard drive by sliding the SATA connector into place then setting the drive into the bay so that it lays flat. Then, you can secure the drive by putting the retainer bar into place and tightening its two screws. In the 2010 model, you can now replace the battery by sliding its connector back into the socket, laying the battery flat in the bay, and replacing the three trilobe screws that you removed earlier. For the 2011 models, all you'll need to do is simply line up the battery connector with its socket and push it back into place. Set the bottom cover back into place and press down near the center to engage the clips that help hold it on. Finally, replace the 10 Phillips screws starting with the longer three in the upper right corner. Followed by the remaining seven screws. Okay, we're done. Your drive should be working normally again. I'll see you next time. For more installation videos and a variety of memories, storage, accessories, and more, visit MacSales.com.